first episode of UGA Sports Rewind. I am Patrick Garvin. This is my co-worker Dave McMahon. We are writers, researchers, and historians for UGASports.com. Tonight we are joined with uh, by uh, Brandon Tolbert, a uh, standout linebacker for Georgia in the mid to late 90s. The three of us are here at Classic City Eats in Watkinsville back here in their uh, extraordinary, to say the least, uh, golf simulator room. Um, but Dave, we're not here to talk about golf, no, are we? No, no, we're, uh, Obviously we're here to talk about football and that's what you want to hear about and that's what we want to hear about. And we're, we're here, what, what this show is all about is, um, we, we talk with former players and we have a, a great former player here with us and we talk about former games, a, a game that he was part of. And we're just here to, to show an high, and I like that 96 Georgia Auburn game because it's pretty exciting to watch. Um, but before we before we talk about that game, I just wanted to ask you, um, Brandon, so w- what are you up to these days? Well, I'm in, uh, we just moved back to Athens, uh, my family and I. I've got uh, my wife, Kimberly, and I've got three kids. I've got a, a ninth grade boy and a sixth grade boy and a four-year-old girl. So. We uh, we were you know I grew, I grew up in <laughs> the four year old girl runs a house let me tell you <laughs> but uh, we grew up in West we were in West I grew up in West Georgia and we were living in West Georgia and we just recently moved out here about four years ago and uh, so I'm in the real estate business and so I do land development uh, uh, you know find pieces of land get them rezoned and uh, engineered and entitled and uh, sell those off so. good deal. You mentioned West Georgia. Going back now to the early '90s, you're you're out of Villa Rica, right? right. And yep, yep. City, had, city of gold. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, and you got a uh, interesting recruiting story, especially yeah. how your your path to Georgia wasn't a straightforward path necessarily. Kind of. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I wasn't a heavily recruited guy coming out of high school, and you know, obviously, recruiting back in the '90s is not like it is today. I mean, I think the whole recruiting thing is. Has changed tremendously, but uh, but uh, growing up uh, in Billerica, we were a small school. Uh, you know, graduated 100 kids. Uh, there's probably one every one kid out of every four years may go off and play D1 football. I mean, we got a handful of kids from Billerica that went off and played. So, so you know, the whole recruiting thing. You know, there wasn't a whole lot of people to talk to about it. But uh, but I, coming out of high school, I was a defensive back, uh, kind of. It's kind of a late bloomer. Grew grew uh, a little bit later in my high school, you know, junior senior year. And uh, whereas uh, you know, back then that you could afford to grow a little bit later. Today they're looking at you as a seventh and eighth grader or ninth grader. But uh, back then uh, I was able to play my junior senior year and uh, uh, started getting recruited by, by a few people. But I still wasn't a big you know blue chip kind of recruit so I, I did go to a Georgia camp so Georgia had Georgia had two camps they had a they had a they had their recruiter you know they had their the guys they wanted to come to camp and then they had the camp that <laughs> that you come and kind of take a picture with coach golf camp. you know you pay you hundred dollars or whatever it was so I went to the hundred dollar camp to get my picture to it you know and luckily if I if I, if I went to the, the the blue chip camp I probably wouldn't have stood out, but I went to the other camp and I kind of, I was kind of one of the better ones there, you know, just kind of looking back on it, I was like, you know, that wasn't a bad move really. So, um, so uh, a guy named Matt McWhorter, uh, who was, uh, he was on coach golf staff at the time. He started, he had my area, the West Georgia area, and he started recruiting me. And, uh, uh, you know, so he, he stayed in touch with me, recruited me and all that kind of stuff. but. Like I said, I, I was still really undersized, and I was kind of a tweener kind of guy. I was kind of my senior year. I was probably 6'2", 180, 185, you know. Uh, but uh, I started, you know, growing into my own. But I really didn't get recruited heavily. So, uh, so when it all came down to it, I had uh, three or four offers. I had West Georgia, I had Georgia Southern, and I had the University of Hawaii. <laughs> Now, Hawaii, a guy named Paul Johnson, who was at Tech, you know, some of y'all may know that guy a little bit, but he recruited me because I was, 
uh, my mom worked for Delta Airlines, so he was in Hawaii. So he's like, you know what? If you're if you're if if your family works at Delta, you may be able to fly. Their family can fly free to come see you play. So so Coach uh, Coach Johnson recruited me at Hawaii. So uh, and, my, and my Coach McWhorter recruited me at Georgia and this and that. But when it all came down to it on signing day, Coach McWhorter came. Uh, came out about three weeks, two or three weeks before sign a day and sat down with me and I thought he was going to come in and give me the offer, you know, but, uh, you know, to my surprise, he did not. He, he, he said he just said they didn't have room on their, uh, you know, on the roster for me for uh, to be, you know, to be signed for a scholarship, but he wanted me to walk on. And so, uh, so it, it really crushed me. You know, like I said, there wasn't a whole lot of people to talk to back then. I was kind of naive. I just assumed, you know, they were calling me and sending me letters that they were going, they wanted me to come play for them. But so I didn't, uh, uh, so that kind of crushed me. So it was down in Georgia Southern and Hawaii. And I decided to go to Hawaii because they were a D1 school. Georgia Southern was a D2 at the time. And uh, Georgia Southern, uh, you know, I called those guys, told them I wasn't going to go there. I was going to go to Hawaii, and but Hawaii was so signing day came. So that, that the night before on Tuesday, signing day is always on. It was on that Wednesday. It was on the fifteenth, I think. And so Tuesday night we had a basketball game, high school basketball game. So they, my parents and the local Villarica paper, we put the lay around my neck and the whole <laughs> thing, and we're going to Hawaii. But I didn't sign the paper. So uh, uh, the next morning we get up. You know, it's eight o'clock in the morning in Georgia, but over there in Hawaii is probably two o'clock. So we just didn't send the paperwork in at the time. And so somebody told my parents that, you know, things can happen, who knows? So we didn't send the paperwork in, kind of waited around. So about one o'clock that afternoon, I got a, I was sitting in class and got a call from Georgia. I said, hey, you need to come up to the office. Georgia's on the phone. So I go up to the office at the high school's principal's office and, and it was, you know, I answered the phone and it's, it's Coach McWhorter. He's like, hey, Brandon, it's been a long day. You know, a couple of people's backed out and decided not to come that we had, had committed and want to know if you, you know, want to be a Georgia Bulldog. And uh, and so I said, yes, sir. And uh, that's kind of how that's kind of how that happened. But wow. if I if I had decided to go to Georgia Southern, I would have probably signed that morning at eight o'clock, mm-hmm. like you know, with all the other recruits, and I went to Georgia Southern. Is it the same time? It was the same time Close. zone. But yeah. luckily, so I thank goodness for time zone. Time zone. Yeah. Time zone. So yeah. And, and you know, I'll say something too. You you kind of by happenstance, luck, however you how you got into your role at Georgia as a linebacker. I mean, it took yeah. it took a Buckus candidate. Randall Godfrey yeah. get hurt yeah. in in '95, and you yeah, well, in and yeah, and I, and I think so. So when I got to Georgia, I wasn't really sure. You know, they didn't really want me in one way. You know, that or at least scholarship wise, so I didn't know if I could truly play or not. And I'll be honest, I don't know if anybody that goes knows deep deep down their soul if they know they can play there until they actually get out there and, and truly see and practice and all. So. Once I got to Georgia and got out there starting to practice, I, I knew I could, you know, I worked as hard as anybody. And, you know, after, you know, a couple of weeks there, I was like, you know what, I, I can play. I, I don't think I can play today, but if I keep working at it, then, you know, maybe uh, next year I can get on the special teams, you know. Uh, you know, today I think they, uh, they're they ready for guys to come in and, and contribute immediately. Uh, luckily back then, you know, there was some time as far as uh, giving me uh, – the red shirt year was huge for me. Getting the weight room started eating better and all that kind of stuff. But. Um, you're one of the few players that could say, "Hey, I played for two different coaches." And played yep. for, you got recruited and, part, like I said, with Mac and Board, and but played under Ray Goff. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of years later, um, you played under Coach Jim Don. Jim Don. And, um, what is the transition like when you when coach when for a player? When a coach gets changed at a well, program, well, I think especially your, you know, he, he came in. Coach Donnan came in my junior year, so I spent three because I got red started, like I said. So I spent three years of trying to prove myself, and so in th- those three years I had with Coach uh, Golf, uh, I had three different position coaches because I started out as a DB. Then the next year, uh, a guy named Dickie Clark, he was outside linebacker coach at the time. I, I went with him, so I proved myself to him. And then, then I got changed. Then the linebacker coaches changed, and uh, went to a guy named Frank Orville. Uh, and, and that's that sophomore year. That's when I started kind of stuff started kind of falling in place. And uh, but uh, and, and I love Coach Golf. Coach Golf. He like I said, he 
if it hadn't been for him, you know, signing off on the paperwork, I'd have never went to Georgia. And he was always a player's coach, you know, and I think he always uh, put, you know, if, if something went wrong, he would kind of put it on his back, so to speak. But, uh, and then, so then Coach Donnan came in. So you kind of proved yourself to the, you know, your three, you know, the position coaches and the defensive coordinator and the head coach. And then all of a sudden, your head coach gets let go, go and, uh, and usually when the head coach gets let go, his staff gets let, let go. So so now a new guy comes in that nobody really knows. Now you got to prove yourself all over again. And now you're, you know, I'm a junior at the time, and, you know, new linebacker coach comes in. So I've got to prove myself to him. A new defense coordinator comes in, you know. So, so I ended up, uh, uh, you know, playing for five different position coaches in five years, which, uh, you know, that was tough because you just had to prove yourself every year. And, uh, you know, and, and sometimes when a new coach comes in and you're a junior or senior, they're kind of looking at the younger guys to kind of, you know. Because they'll have those guys for, 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 for a couple of years. Yeah, that yeah. But uh, transition is never easy. Um, but uh, like I said, I, I like Coach Goff and Coach Donnan, and I still communicate with uh, with both of them today. And, you know, they both live in town. So, so uh, it's good to uh, talk to those guys and see them. On the field, the, the the transition not being easy, it was, I guess, reflected there too. It's a tough start yeah. to the to the Don and era, three yeah. and five yeah, entering was. in the entering the '96 uh, Auburn game. Um, Georgia just had lost to Kentucky as a big favorite at Kentucky, and then got drilled by Florida. And I granted Florida yeah. win the national title yeah. that year, but entering this game, I mean, it just didn't. It didn't. I think Georgia was about a ten-point underdog, and it just yeah. didn't. It didn't look uh, that good. Yeah, to say the least. Yeah, it didn't. It, it was a. Uh, yeah. When you come to Georgia, hey, you're thinking. You know, at worst, ten and two. You're thinking about going to Sugar Bowl. You think you know at that time and winning an SEC championship and all that kind of stuff. And and you know, I got Richard in '93, so '92 they were ten and two and really had a good chance. And then. And then Coach Golf, it just kind of, you know, we had some guys get hurt, uh, you know, a quarterback and a running back, and all of a sudden he, he gets let go. And then here comes the new coach, Coach Don, and new coaching staff. And, and uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, early excitement, you know, every, you know, hey, new coach, that means we're going to go, you know, 12 and 0 or whatever. Well, next thing you know, we start off 0 and 2, I think. And then next thing you know, you look up, you're 3 and 5, like you said. and and uh, you know, you go to Auburn. You go to Auburn. It's hard. It's a tough place to go and win. And so next thing you know, you're three and five. You could go three and six, but and you start off the game. It's it's twenty eight to seven before you look up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The first game that people started getting excited and they Georgia's back on the map was this ninety six um, Georgia yeah. Auburn game. So we might as well just watch the game and sure. Tell us yeah. what you think about that game. Let's uh so let's rewind our calendars back to November sixteenth, nineteen ninety six. Uh Georgia, like I said, was three and five, going on the planes to play at seven and two and ranked twentieth, I believe, Auburn. Hundredth meeting Georgia Auburn um, right here at the Plains. Um, it's funny that Auburn has a, a lead at, at series at that time. It's, it's not like that anymore. Georgia has a nice little f- um, five game cushion right now in the overall series, so it's pretty good. But we're looking right there at the uh, Georgia defense. Um, a couple names you recognize? There's there's the mug shot there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Greg Bright was a great player, and uh, he was a four year starter. He was, he, he was a four year starter. He's one, of, he's one of the leader, leading tacklers yeah. of all time in Georgia, yeah. and. Uh, uh, and, and, and Auburn took the, uh, took advantage early. I mean, although hey, you made a nice little tackle right there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Auburn. It was basically all Auburn early on in the game. It, it was, and, I, and I'll be honest with you, our, our defense didn't play that well at the beginning. Uh, we we just, uh, you know, I, I don't know what it was. We just, you know, Auburn got out on us pretty quick. And, and uh, there's Robert Baker, and then there's the. <laughs> There, there you there's go. the famous shot of man, how many um, how many people how many Georgia fans do you think have that picture um, <laughs> framed somewhere around? Yeah, I've got that one myself. Uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, speak, speaking of that though, did, did after the game did, did you hear about I, that? I, I didn't what? hear about it. I didn't know anything about it after the game. Oh, yeah. uh, yeah. So uh, so you know then then you started seeing it pop up in, in you know in stores and yeah. and all that kind of stuff and and uh, I got me a uh, it was, got it was, me a photo. There you go. Hanging, I, hanging in the house. Yeah. So. 
I'll there point out here, this is Brian Smith starting yeah. instead of Mike Bobo. Uh, and, Bobo had yeah. pr- interception problems he, leading into that game. He did. Mike uh, Mike was our starting quarterback. And matter of fact, Robert Edwards was our starting running back. And uh, they both, uh, uh, you know, they were coming off the bench. Yeah, and uh, you know, yeah. coach decided not to yeah. start in this game, and maybe. so we had Brian Smith, and we had uh, I think that was Patrick Pass back there. Pass, maybe, Pass maybe and Curtsy and Collins Curtsy, and yeah. all those yeah. guys. And that guy, you had to find, you had to find a, the ball to him. Somehow, I tell you what, Hans Ward, he was uh, he was he was a man that did it all that year for us. Uh, he did everything for Georgia: pass, yeah. run, throw. He, everything. he really and, did. In, in this game, you get to even see his blocking skills. Yeah, that, that yeah. he really get to be known for in, that, in the press. That's exactly right. I mean, you look at him; he's not a, a super huge, big receiver, but I tell you, he, as far as all-around football players, he might have been the best all-around football player you know that I, I ever played with, just because he could do so much. Yeah. And you mentioned Patrick. Uh, pass and there's Patrick right there. Right there. Yep, there he is, right there. So this made, this uh, tied the score at seven. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah, as, you, so notice, as the, you notice, there's no score. Like for all you youngsters, right. yeah. you know, they, don't, they didn't have scores on at, at all times like they do now. That's right. You had to keep up with it in your head if you're watching <laughs> on uh, watching at home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, Patrick Pass, nice. But Patrick, Patrick Pass line. had a great career at uh, with 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 the Patriots. I, he he got a, a handful of years in for sure. Couple rings. Uh, Damian Craig was the quarterback there uh, for there's Auburn. Kirby Smart and Brandon there's on Ke- the pass defense. There's uh, Kevin McLeod was their, their guy. Matter of fact, I got drafted by Jacksonville, and McLeod was also drafted the same same year I was, which is kind of funny. <laughs> like I said, that got out almost quick. and uh, Auburn was a good team that year. Great. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, so when you're when you're out there, I mean, are you barking out signals for the rest of the team, or is that a different linebacker? Or? Well, Greg, Greg Bright at the time was calling the plays from the sideline. Coach Kynes was signaling in, and and, my, and uh, Greg was our middle linebacker. And there's Champ Bailey on the recovery. Yeah, at number forty two, not yeah, uh, he's forty two. Yeah, that's right, not yep. number four. Like he's that's a lot right. People remember him, but his freshman uh, year is forty two. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, I, I would call the strength strong right, strong left, and you know that kind of stuff. But Greg would call the plays in the huddle. Uh, you know, a side story to this game was how Georgia was terrible on turnover margin for the year, but Auburn was one of the best in the country. Not this game. Not this game. You're yeah, right. I think yeah. Auburn committed two. Georgia didn't commit a single turnover. But yeah, Champ yeah, Bailey man. picked it up. Yeah. Kirby might have knocked that one out. That was, was that Kirby knocking yeah, it out? Good yeah, good for Kirby. Let me ask you, twenty-eight to seven. Yeah. It's late in the second quarter. Like like I said earlier, it it's um, it the season hasn't been going that well. No, I mean, it, it's and tough. you start thinking, uh, this isn't this, this you know, probably ain't gonna. Well, turn here's out the deal: right. you're three and five. You're down twenty-eight to seven. You're on the roads. It was kind of an uphill uphill battle there, and. Uh, but down twenty-eight to seven, that's a huge play it, because it is a big play. You get I mean, the ball back because you know, really, when you're down, if you if you go into halftime at three touchdowns, down three touchdowns, it's, it's hard to come back from. And uh, so that, that that was a huge play right there. We knock it out right there. Champ jumps on it. Uh, you know, there's less than a minute to go in the half, and uh, uh, so our offense had to come up and make a play. So. I think coach inserted Mike, tried to make some plays here at the end of the half, see if we couldn't score. Finds Juan Daniels. He's a good, solid play, um, yep. player back in the day. Yeah, absolutely. Always did well at Auburn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he did. Yeah. And then Kersey. You know, here comes Kersey. Tori yeah. Kersey out of Florida. There yeah. you go. I, was, I think he might have been out of Jacksonville. I believe Kirk, you're right. Kersey was a tough little running back, and uh, that, that was a big touchdown right there before the half. Uh, kind of put us within two touchdowns, and uh, which, which was huge. Good blocking. 55, there's Takeo Spikes. He and Robert were teammates at Washington yeah. County who they put us out my uh, my <laughs> senior year of, you know, in high school in, in the quarterfinals. Robert, may tell you, t- talk about that every now and then. Yeah, you. we do. You know, I see Robert, and uh, matter of fact, I was uh, – we had to go play the other day, and I, I text Robert, and we had – I was going through Washington County and took a picture there of the <laughs> stadium, and, and uh, he's like, what are you doing there, man? <laughs> But still, you're still down two touchdowns, tough. But and, and and now you're getting the ball but, back. But again. we started getting some turnovers, and uh, that, that really helped, uh, obviously. And that was deep in your territory too. Yeah, so it, it was. was it was. Uh, that was Jermaine Smith. Yeah, yeah. he played in the Jermaine, NFL for yeah, a bit. He played in the NFL. Uh, a guy named Jason Ferguson was yeah. also in there. A couple he, of junior college. Yeah, guys. yeah, they were. They were JUCO guys that came in and really helped us out a lot. 
Uh, Gene Tootle might have jumped on the fumble right there. Coach Kynes was our defensive coordinator, and mm-hmm. we he was a 4-3 defensive guy, so we, we were in a 4-3 a lot, and uh, we were able to uh, – create some turnovers yeah. that, that day. And, you know, the, this defense, although the record three and five, defense gave up a, you know, a lot of yards, why not? There, there's still some pieces here. I mean, all these guys are standout well, players, yeah, speaking yeah. of. Yeah. There you go. But, you know, you look at Champ. Champ was young. Uh, he was he was a freshman that year. And, uh, you know, Greg and, and – And that guy. There you go. That's, <laughs> it's still hard to believe, uh, you know, <laughs> now that I'm – 46 years old, yeah. look back and it's like, man, did I really play back then? But, uh, but yeah, like I said, Jermaine and Jason Ferguson, and yeah. there's Paul Ooh. Snellens and uh, Arant, OG, OG played at Dallas uh, with the Cowboys for a little bit. He was a freshman that year too. I think him and Champ might have came in together mm-hmm. the same year. He made a lot of tackles in his career. Too. He did. He really did. Uh, there's Derek. I think that's Derek Bird there, Number uh, defensive end there, uh, squeezing down and. Uh, there's Ferguson, 92, Paul Snellens. Yep. Uh, and then – That was a big field goal miss. Yeah. Yeah. Big miss. That, so a lot that, of opportunities they, they, they didn't you know, and that, 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 you know, we get the ball back on about 30, 35-yard line there. And uh, so uh, Coach Beck went back with, with Mike and Robert is back in there now. And, yep. and there's old Heinz and, Ward. And there's there's the playmaker. He, he – uh, seems like any time we need a big play, 19 was there for us yep. and – uh, hey, obviously, he went on and, and had a big career in the NFL. And Super Bowl MVP. Super Bowl MVP, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, be a Hall of Famer. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm rooting for him to get in, a, get in that goal. He will, he'll get there. Yeah. He had 175 receiving yards in this game. So. <laughs> wow. That's one of the yeah. one of the all time best for Georgia. Wow. He was a special player and great, great person. Uh, so that pulls you guys within, within seven. Yep. And then Auburn's offense, they say, although you about caused a fumble there, yeah. Brandon. Uh, yeah. They start moving. Yeah. They do. They start moving And it's moving not looking again. good. Yeah. You know? yeah, they start moving again on us. Uh, how much time is left right there? Was it about three minutes yeah. left? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we were uh, – we had to, we had to get another turnover uh, or stop them. We had, we had to come up with something to have a chance. Because and you were going for that turnover right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, trying to rip the ball out. Coach was telling us to rip the ball out if we – could stand them up or what have you, but yeah. it didn't come out on that one. Uh, Another uh, stop right there. So we stopped him there. And a little 17, he was a good little back. Uh, I tell you what Auburn always had. They had big tight ends. Mm-hmm. And, uh, man, the defense I, we ran that year, I had to go up on that tight end every once in a while. Let me tell you, it was a full-time job <laughs> <laughs> handle him. Here we are in a 4-3 stack, strong left. A little weak side power. Yeah. There's OG again. Uh, Kirby coming up to call a timeout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that looks uh, that looks familiar now. Yeah, yeah, that does. Doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So you All get right. the ball back after and after forcing the but punt. Very, but very little time. Yeah, but there, little yeah, time. There's not yeah. a whole lot of time. How much time was there? Forty five seconds, yeah. something like that. Under a minute. Yeah. It's like we're in doubles there under the center. Nice little pass to uh, Matt Dixon. Matt, Matt was Dixon. a walk on that really worked his tail off. And now look at him; he's he's in the he, you know an important part of the game. He's in there in the in yeah. doubles, and there he is right there at number two up there at the top. Yeah, Bobo right again. Then, oh yeah, that was, that was Corey with yeah. a big big catch right it, there. It, was that about a fifteen yeah. yard? It's not strike. as big as it's not as big as catch of the game though. No, no, it's, we we've got to save that one for sure. Yeah. The, now the yeah. announcer is talking about how Bobo cannot take a sack. He yeah. just mentioned it. And yeah. um, what is there? Fourteen seconds. Fourteen I think, seconds. Mike Ward, another uh, big play, tiptoeing in the uh, make sure to get at least one foot in the inbounds. Speaking of another piece, we had Adam Meadows there at yeah. left tackle. Adam was a big. He came in as a tight end too. Yeah, he did. He's out of McEachern and yeah. he was there a senior in Cobb County and, this year, and he ended up playing a long time for the uh, Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, he did. Sure did. And, and then, and there we go. And then people are oh worried. Huge sack right there. It's pretty much over. Uh, you but know. luckily, I mean, they, they, yeah. the ref stopped the, the clock. They, they well, they Char- Charles Dorsey, the Auburn nose tackle, who yeah. uh, who got yeah. by Matt Stinchcomb, yeah. um, he picked up the ball 
and thinking it was over. So thinking it was over. So, so they that's stopped what the clock. So if Charles Dorsey does not pick up well, that I, ball, I Auburn wins. There's Will Muschamp. Yeah. Will Muschamp was a GA. How about how about that? He's probably telling Charles not to pick up the ball. <laughs> yeah. But but anyway, that Georgia really lucked up. That, that was and, huge. That was gave huge them, luck. No no question about right, it. We go doubles right here. Last play other other other. Uh, Corey's down here at the bottom, and Mike heaves it up. There you go. That was a heck of a catch. Uh, uh, when I saw that first time, I was like, okay, there's a flag. Yeah, Looked I saw it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That was unbelievable. Terry Bowden was the coach at the time. Brandon, do you want to talk about, like, it, were you prepared or were you even cognizant yeah. of overtime? Because well, this was the first year. Well, the thing about it is it was the first year, I, uh, I think what you're about to say is that the college could have the overtime stuff. Well, so Coach Donovan was new to our team. He's a first-year guy. And so the whole year – he would explain to us kind of before practice uh, or really after practice and hey if we ever get an overtime game this is what we're going to do we want to be prepared we want to be the best most prepared team we want to be more prepared than the other team uh if we get into an overtime situation hey if we win the if we win the toss uh we're going to go on defense we want them to go on offense because whatever they do if they score three or they score seven that way we know what we've got to do on offense so uh so yeah he, he did coach down and talked about that a lot throughout the whole season especially to the captains and, and you know kind of how to relay the message and all that kind of stuff but he had that message pretty clear throughout the season uh for sure, so but where where are you? I mean, obviously you're on, you're on the sideline, but what is going through your mind right now on a last play of the game type thing down seven? Months? Well, we knew we had kind of scratched and clawed back into the game, and we knew, uh, you know, obviously we were down by seven. We were on 35 yard line, and some stuff had kind of went our went our way offensively. We knew we were down to the last play, and we throw it in the end zone. Hopefully, we can catch it and and you know and and, and get and get to overtime. Uh, but it was a big play, obviously, and, and it goes down in Georgia history as one of the you know bigger plays as far as uh, as far yeah. as happening. But yeah, and, and I was so happy for Mike uh, and Corey yeah, Allen, right Corey there. Allen making Stretching the catch. Over. I mean, what what a play! I mean, if that thing would have been five yards shorter or, or two yard or even one yard shorter, I mean, it just doesn't happen. Yeah. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves in a tie ball game, and. Uh, we're down 21 points. And they say, no, we're tied and we're going into overtime. And there's Coach Don in there. Yeah. He's explaining to us exactly what he talked to us the whole year about, about how the overtime series work. And Gene and, Toodle uh, right there. There's Dean Toodle. Knows how, to, uh, knows how to call heads and tails and knows how to always pick defense. That's right. That's right. And he calls, uh, I think we won the toss and we went on defense. And the key there is on defense to go out there and stop them and hold them. But that didn't happen. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Damien Craig. Damien Craig went scot got free through there and did nobody touched him so we got to go on offense but you come back but yeah. we come back and robert like i said earlier robert didn't start the game and hindsight 2020 looking back on it robert was pretty fresh when we got into the overtime period and uh and man he put on a show in the overtime period yeah he did and uh obviously robert went on to be a first round draft choice by new england and uh but but uh Coach Donna knew who to kind of go to there in the overtime for sure. And even even through the passing game, Robert Edwards is big. Yeah, yeah, a little screen pass. So Georgia gets the ball back a couple, after couple the spins. first one. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. It's yeah. Robert Edwards. Again. Yeah, Auburn won. The, Auburn won the toss that second yeah. overtime. So, so they go on defense. They they decide to go on defense. We had to go offense first. So if you go on offense first, you want to score. You want to score a touchdown. Uh, and so. Uh, yeah. A little, little counter to Robert. Jake Fleming out there pulling. And Robert sneaks it in there in the end zone. And, uh, you, you hear Fleming going. He got right behind Jake and jumped in the end zone. And, uh, now Auburn try, just trying to yeah, counter. Yeah. They just blew. They just blew us off the ball and blew us right into the end zone. And were, were you exhausted? The, or do you? Yeah, remember, you I mean, know. I think at that time it, it was a long game. There's a lot of snaps. We're on the field a lot. And uh, man, at this time you are. You're just. You're you're exhausted. Uh, but you got to dig deep, and uh, that's what all the training's for and all that kind of stuff. But there's Damien jumping over the jumping yeah, over the this, pile. I thought I'd knock the ball out. Yeah, right there. I think. I think. Uh, at the time, I thought you did too. Yeah. Um, and yeah. yeah, but it was a touchdown. So they scored. So we go go back on offense again. 
And uh, Robert scores Robert again. Robert scores all, again. Th- three touchdowns all in overtime. Yeah. And uh, so stat wise, some of the players like this overtime game. Uh, that's for, right. For that's personal exactly purposes. right. Uh, I agree. But but it seems like both offenses are kind of had no offense to you defenders, yeah. but having a relatively easy time, at least these well, first it, yeah. few overtime I mean, I, periods. You know, it, it does. It, it looks like. Uh, you know they're, they're they're running through us, and and our offense is running through those guys. And uh, you know I think the, both offenses had the momentum for sure in this game, no question about it. Robert had his day. Now a little torn curtsy going for yeah, him. You mentioned him earlier yeah, in the game. Yeah. So that puts up Georgia, fifty six to forty nine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned Heinz Ward blocking Pat earlier. Yeah. Does everything, right? He does everything. Heinz was a. Uh, I tell you, back in the mid '90s, rarely would you see a receiver getting spotlighted for blocking. From you know, yeah. you know, yeah. it's just so Auburn needs to tie this. Yeah, Ooh. and then almost, almost thought we picked it right there with uh, Ronald Bailey. Oh, Ronald Bailey, the, yep. old, Ronald, the eldest of the, the oldest, the oldest. Ronald came in with me. We were the yeah. same year, the, and then he didn't come up with a nickname for him. Yeah, no, he 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 got you know he didn't get the, you know the, the great nickname there. Uh, that boss and champ guy, yeah. but uh. but you know, I mentioned how the defenders look tired. What not? This one last drive, you guys really held it down. You know, yeah. Uh, this, this is third down here. It's third down. Here's yeah. what we knew: we knew that uh, we knew that we had scored a touchdown. So the only they, they couldn't kick a field goal. They knew we knew they had to score. And but Joe Kynes is right there talking. There, there's Coach Kynes. I mean, I, uh, you know, Coach Kynes is one of my all-time favorite coaches. Uh, uh, there's Hap Hines or yeah. Kicker, and uh, was this the fourth down? Fourth play? down play right here. Fourth, fourth or three. three. We got to stop. We got to stop them right here. Uh, they come out. Uh, you know, they they've got their their head. Like I said, Auburn's always been big. They got a huge tight end. They got you know the 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 wing out here to the right. So we thought we did, we thought they were going to do a little play action, maybe a little throw something out here in the flats or. It could be if they go motion. It could be a little jet play, or it's probably going to be Damian Craig's going to take it, take it himself, and try to go strong. So, guys started coming to motion. There wasn't going to be a jet. So then I kind of snuck up. Everybody, Kirby, kind of snuck up, kind of got there. But Jason Ferguson made a great play right here. Got through, beat his guy, got to him, slowed him down. And uh, made the play right there. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're laughing at the who, who was that that did the that, somersault? That, that, that was Jason Ferguson. Okay. Yeah. And three hundred uh, pound guy doing three hundred pound. There he is right there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, that Adam Meadows right there carrying all yeah. the coach on. Yeah. The best best play. The best thing about the end of the game right here is John England tries to throw the Gatorade bath on him, and he ends up Gatorade and bath himself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm kidding about that. Yeah, man, that on top of them. That's a heck of a Gatorade bath you put on yourself there, John. <laughs> yeah. For, uh, well, there's Dustin Lucky yeah. and the Lucky Triplets. I mean, they were great linebackers, great human beings. There's Brian Jones yep. down there, Rusty Beatles up in the stands there. 56 to 49 and four overtimes, which was the first overtime game in SEC football history. Dogs on top, yep. on the plains. Um, Unfortunately, you guys would lose to Ole Miss the next, the next week, week, but then you beat Tech yeah. to kind of salvage a season at five and six. But I think looking back on that '96 season and that team, because you had a lot of guys returning yeah. to '97, yeah. what wound up being a uh, how do you go from five and six to ten and two? Well, um, uh, yeah, that, that is that is true. And there was a lot of new stuff going in when the new coaches came in, so a lot of new guy, you know, guys were learning the new new way or whatever, but. After that season, uh, I do think the Auburn game kind of helped us kind of, kind of, you know, go somewhere we needed to go the next year, and uh, we had a lot of good senior leadership. I, th- I think with Mike and, and Robert and, and Hines, and you know, those guys on the offensive side, and me and uh, me and Greg and uh, a guy named Kirby Smart, he was a junior that uh, we really kind of got together and said, "Hey, man, look." We can't go five and six again. We didn't come to Georgia to go six and five, five and six, and not even go to a bowl. And so, uh, so that off season, we really got together. And I really think Bobo really led the whole team as far as hey, get to your workouts. Hey, we're gonna go out here and do our seven on seven stuff, and we're gonna get out here and work, and and we're gonna have a year to remember kind of deal. And, and I think that 
that really uh, that that I think he kind of led the way. And uh, but you know we had a lot of young guys uh, that year too. And Marcus Stroud that came in, and uh, Richard Seymour came in, and then uh, of course Champ Bailey was a uh, he was a sophomore I think at that time. And so we had a lot of good seniors with uh, uh, like I said with uh, Ronald Bailey and Derek Bird. There's just a lot of guys. So we just we really worked hard that year to make it a point. Hey. We've got to turn this thing around. And even Coach Donnan at the time said, hey, guys, this is the year that you need to put your mark on the program and see if we can't get this thing turned around. And that's, you know, and, and, and that's what, uh, that was our goal. And two, you finished 10th yeah. in 97. Yeah. And, yeah. and as as we were talking earlier, that was kind of the foundation to even here a quarter century later. Georgia really hasn't faltered from being, being uh, you know. Well, that, that, in that, that 97 year, you know, we started off really well. We always had difficulty with Tennessee. They had Peyton up there. We thought we were going to win that, that year. And, and I think we would have beat them, but they had a freshman come out. Uh, uh, it was a Jamal Lewis who just kind of ran all over that game. But, so we're sitting there at six and one. We go down to Florida, who's absolutely beat us up pretty good in the last two or three years. And we went in there and beat them. And we're sitting there at what seven and one, something like that. And we've got an off week the next week, and uh, we ended up unfortunately laying an egg against Auburn the, mm -hmm. the week next week. But uh, we ended up going to the uh, Outback Bowl that year, playing with a good Wisconsin team. They were a lot bigger than us, but we were able to. We, we were a little bit you, quicker. You also skipped over the Georgia Tech game, which another another bubble to Allen play. Well, that's true. Yeah, I, I, the great thing I will say this about Georgia Tech. Is uh, we you know we lost a few games during my career, but we never got beat by Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We can hang right. our hand. We can hang our hat on that one for sure. You mentioned a lot of uh, different players. Um, do you still keep in track? Uh, keep, keep in touch with all those guys? Yeah, you know, on, on a regular basis, I, I keep up with uh, you know with uh, Kirby and, and Mike Bobo and uh, a guy named Trey Sight, who was a secondary played in the secondary. Like he was actually my roommate. And, uh, Travis Johnson, he was a he was a lineman. He was Mike's roommate. And, uh, so there there was a handful of guys that that, that I stay in touch with uh, on a daily basis. But we also you know uh, you know see talk to different guys throughout the season. But when football season, uh, the great thing about when football season starts, Letterman always do the do a, does a class reunion kind of deal, or, or not necessarily a class reunion, but a Letterman's reunion. They do they do different events. They do a barbecue. They'll do a uh, a, a golf, uh, a golf deal out at you know maybe Athens Country Club or somewhere around town. So you get to go back and get to see a lot of those guys, and you get to play golf with older guys that played before you, yeah. uh, or you get to play with maybe some young. Now, now all of a sudden I'm playing with younger guys. You know, I used to, <laughs> You're the old guy I used now. to be the young guy playing with older guys. Now I'm all, I'm kind of in the middle, so I can go either way. I can play with the older guy uh, or, or uh, you know somebody like John Lasting, or, or I can play with a uh, a younger guy, but run into some, you know, uh, uh, random guys uh, that you might have played with, or guys that, that you really don't know that might have been here 10, 20 years before you, or now it's 10, 20 years, you know, younger than you. So there's, uh, so there's got to be that special it is. bond, man. I mean, you know, it is. Well, well I see, I, and the thing is with me, I grew up a Georgia. Like my dream was to go when I was seven years old was to go play for Georgia. I knew all the Georgia players and all that kind of stuff. That's that was my dream, and. Uh, so to be able to go play at Georgia was a dream. And then all of a sudden to be in that little fraternity that not many guys are in, not, not many people are in. And now, you know, now you kind of get to hang out with them and, you know, you get to, you know, talk about different stuff, how, you know, what they did in the 60s or the 70s or the 80s. And now I'm the guy talking about <laughs> you know, in the 90s, you know. But uh, so it is, it is a neat, special bond that, uh, that, uh, that I really do cherish a lot, and it's, it's really a, a neat thing. You mentioned Kirby, and that you yeah. still keep up yeah. with him, although he's obviously pretty busy. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious when when I mean we even saw you know from him calling a timeout to you know different ways he'd be on the sideline, sure. for example. Yeah, was it there was indications when he was a player that he was going to be a coach? There a was. Well, well, the thing is about it, I don't know if many people know, but his dad was a high school coach. And uh, he was a high school coach at Bainbridge, and then he's been at a handful of places. But Kirby grew up in that environment with his dad being a coach, and I think that, you know, so he, so when he got to Georgia, and, and, and Bobo was the same way. His dad was a high school coach. So those guys were looking at stuff differently than, than maybe I was 
they were they were looking at you know big picture stuff when i was maybe looking at what my just my position was doing they were looking at at the other you know uh other positions and but you could tell that uh uh you know that those guys were probably going to go down that route of coaching and you know started getting you know they got in their junior senior years uh when you know mike was a senior he ended up after he graduated he went into the ga world with uh he matter of fact he ga to george and then mike only had one uh when he went to jacksonville state and then he got on with coach rig uh and he was there for a long time and then kirby he uh he uh he got on with the nfl team for a little bit and then uh he he came back and ended up being a ga at georgia and he went to a handful of schools and uh uh, but then he 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 got on with uh, like Coach Saban. Saban and yeah, I don't know what that guy's up to now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he, but but yeah, you could tell that uh, Kirby really uh, Kirby's Kirby's a smart guy. Academically, walking around, you know, just just common sense, and uh, he does uh, he, he he does his job well. And uh, but I never would have thought he'd been the head coach of Georgia, but. But it, it, my next yeah, yeah, I just you know I didn't know if he'd be the head coach of Georgia, but he he uh, obviously has uh, he's earned it, and I think he's uh, he's he's the guy that, that, that should be there for us, and he has been, and I think he's going he's going to be there for a long time. Perfect. Well, that wraps it up, folks. Our uh, first episode of UGA Sports Rewind. Um, we uh, first obviously thank Brandon for thank y'all for coming here it. and and Classic City Eats and Watkinsville for hosting us. So we will uh, see you next time. Yeah, thank you. Wah!